Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. And I'm super excited. Actually, this is actually my first actual talk about Netlify because usually I talk about other things. And I'm just happy to share why Netlify is so popular among React devs. Uh, a little bit about myself. I go by Swix on the internet. Um, I am one of the moderators on r slash React.js. If you want to learn about React, uh, there's 150,000 of us learning and sharing and discussing and hiring each other. Uh, I'm also a big proponent of learning in public, which is the reason I got started speaking in the first place. Um, and I also work at Netlify on developer experience, which is why I'm excited to share this with you, because I think the developer experience is really good. Um, and the primary question I want to talk about today is, is really about, um, as a React developer, what do you really care about doing uh, in shipping your, your, your work to your end users? Um, and I propose that it, you care about cost, you care about speed, security. Um, custom domains, are you, you don't want like, some generic random domain. You want some custom, nice looking domain and some control over what shows up on the URL bar, as well as continuous deployment. Like When you check stuff into Git, you, you, should, you should want to have a very strong relationship between your source control and your deployment strategy. Um, and unfortunately, when people learn React and when people deploy their React apps, there's a lot of accidental complexity. These are uh, some articles that I pulled uh, from unnamed sources. Uh, and this is the kind of tutorial that you, that you used to have, how to deploy a React app. First set up, uh, first pick your SSH key, uh, pick your f between like 10 different levels of, of tiers, uh, set up a droplet, set your default user, remember the Chamod stuff properly, uh, you're screwed. Uh, and then like set up a reverse proxy of Nginx, Set up uh, blah blah. I don't even know what this is. Uh, and 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 the same thing. The same thing goes on for uh, this other uh, non unnamed competitor uh, product. Where you also you also have to set up all of these guys. You first you have theory, and then you set it up. Um, so it really just seems like a lot of accidental complexity. We wanted to get our React apps in front of users, and then we had to go through all this shit, um, or hire someone else to do it. Um, so this really it's really not something that that, that we we endure. And this is something that you know I haven't even mentioned all this like backend stuff. This is important, right? It's, I'm not saying that this is not important. This is important for standing up services, but you don't need to do that for for front end development. You should have some sort of idea of separation and and uh, you know use the right resources according to your your, your needs. Um, so what do you care about? Uh, Netlify tries to answer each of these for you. You answer the costing by the lowest cost possible, which is literally we put your your sites on AWS S3. That's the cheapest thing possible. And anything dynamic will, that you run through serverless functions, we scale up and down per usage instead of uh, having having a constant uh, bill. Uh, speed will we'll put everything on, on CDN by default and optimize your assets. Um, security uh, we we must have HTTPS by default. Uh, what I didn't show you was those guides that I showed you. You get all the way to deploying your site, and you haven't even set up HTTPS yet because that's too complicated. You have to go and get your certification and all that. Um, and a smaller surface area. Um, custom domains, you, you should have a sort of DNS provider that's sort of in seamlessly integrated with your hosting. And continuous deployment, uh, Netlify sort of answers that with a Git-based workflow. So I'll dive in a little bit. I don't have a lot of time, right? 10 minutes. But I'll dive in a little bit into each of these things in my demo. Um, but the, the, the long story short is that Netlify gives Jamstack their superpowers. The, the whole idea is Jamstack, uh, Netlify is a big proponent of Jamstack, but you don't need to use Netlify to, to do Jamstack, right? You can go, you can host it on S3, you can host it on GitHub pages, you can host it on Zite, um, you can host it just literally anywhere. And that's the whole point is portability. Like you're, you're picking the right level of abstraction for building your apps. Um, and so uh, Netlify like, will live and die by its ability to serve Jamstack developers just like everyone else. It's a very, very even playing field. OK, so uh, this, this is kind of how I put it recently in terms of uh, Jamstack and Netlify. Um, let me kind of put it. So before Netlify, setting up all of this stuff, it kind of looks like this. Uh, all the hoops that you have to jump through to in order to get stuff done, um, just to get like a, a, a best practices web app up, right? Like all of these guys, all these things the guy is doing, and look at really how happy it is at the end. Oh, Apple! There you go. <laughs> and he's also the site. Um, so that's not that's not really you know the kind of developer experience uh, we're, we're, we're keen on. So I just want to talk a little bit about some of the things that Netlify does that is unique to Netlify that that you, that you may want to know about. Um, so for example, the, this very this very um, 
this very meetup that you signed up on, this is the React Knowledgeable website, it also happens to be open source and, it's, and it is a Gatsby uh, site. So I, um, what, what, what basically happened was I went to the GitHub page um, and I was like, oh, I, I, think, I think this is a bit too white, I think it needs a little bit more color. So I, I opened up the PR and I changed something in the files. I said, uh, header style background color peach puff which uh, I was told is, is like a nice CSS color. Um, and, then, and then I was like, okay, um, I don't have you know, the ability to check this, or like, let's say I'm a designer, I don't have the ability to code. Um, I don't know what this looks like until someone spins it up for me, right? Um, but Notify automatically sets up deploy previews for every single PR, so all you do is you, you just click here, um, and you can see a deploy previewed version of this new page Right, and you can compare and contrast. This is actually how I work with my designer. The, that guy doesn't know how to code, doesn't matter because I can just give him a direct link to, to check whatever he wants to check. Uh, responsive, publicly available, all that. Um, what Netlify is doing behind the background is that every single, uh, every single PR, every single commit is tied in from GitHub into a deploy hook, right? So each of these deploys are built behind the scenes and, and it's, it's continuously built. So there is a build bot that, that you don't have to um, manually build on your machine. It's literally the only interface that I use is GitHub. I didn't even download it to my local computer. So, so that's the it's 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 this it's this process of like uh, a Git based workflow is this process of like put everything in your source control as a single source of truth, and then from there you build your infrastructure out um, to to support all of that. Um, so when when and if you know this is ready. Um, uh, or, or, or anyone else can just merge this in, right? And whatever, whatever was deployed here just becomes the current master. There's no difference at all between the, the test staging environment and the production one. And, and any time that you spend debugging that, it's just wasted time because the, the only thing you actually care about is production. All right, so uh, and I, a little bit about history of Netlify. Netlify actually has a started her life as Maker Loop. Um, so uh, the first thing that first thing it was started out as was WebPub. It was like a CMS thing, and then they realized a lot of people wanted to host their host their stuff. So it became Bitbaloon, which which does simple drag and drop hosting, and eventually became Netlify. So that's the story of the last five years. But I just wanted to show you like the the fundamental concept of Netlify is no more complicated than than drag and drop. So I'm going to go to netlifycom drop. This is, this is uh, the, the olden days of Bitbaloon, and this is how we used to, to, to deploy sites. Um, I, don't have a, I don't have a demo site ready, so I'm just going to download a, a prepared demo site. Um, and I'm just going to drag and drop this into, into the, the box here. Uh, and what it's doing is just simply uploading that file that it, that it gave me, right? Um, it's already published, and uh, I can just go here and see the deployed site. Um, and this is a publicly available URL for, for everyone, right? So as a simple front-end developer, you have the ability to just uh, put in sites, upload it, put, make it publicly available. Um, it's already HTTPS. Uh, I can't zoom in, but notice that the green lock icon. You can set a custom domain for free. Um, you can you can version control it as well in, inside of inside of this, this stuff. It's it's really really very powerful. But but this is this is where Netlify started life. This is just a CDN, just drag and drop. Then that's that's a fundamental idea. Like everything Jamstack builds a static asset and you deploy it to the nearest point of presence to your end user. That is that's the theoretical limit of speed, right? Like that's, you cannot get faster than that. Uh, so that, that is the fundamental idea of Netlify Edge, which is like, you know, you deploy everything to the edge and then, and then uh, do, every, do all your server assets there. Um, I also showed you Netlify Build, where, uh, you know, every time you, you do something in Git, uh, it, it, it gets continuously deployed into, into, into master. Um, and then the last thing I should, I should probably show you is Netlify Dev. So the, out of the three pillars of the company, this one is the, this is the newest, that's why it's beta. Uh, I happen to be the lead uh, uh, CLI dev on this uh, when we launched it this year. Um, and, and this, this is the whole idea of like, let's keep going backwards in your development flow, right? We, okay, Netlify Edge took care of your deploy. Netlify Build took care of your continuous de delivery. What about your development stage? Um, how can we make it better there? So for example, if I, was, if, I was, if I was doing this, I still have to wait for the continuous deployment uh, you know, machine to, to run out, to spin up and spin down. Uh, there, is, there is a bit of lag time and that kind of breaks your flow a little bit. Um, what I've done here is, uh, uh, oh, by the way, uh, I'm gonna ask you to, to use your, uh, phones in a bit. So you, if you want to connect to the, the internet, uh, you can connect to Stripe guests on, on, on the phones. Um, so what I've done is I have this, I have this, uh, I clone the repo locally. 
Um, and and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a local repo. Uh, one, of the, one of the interesting things about this is that uh, it, has a, it has a serverless function, just like uh, Thomas was mentioning. So I have my, I have my React uh, repo over here with all my components and pages and templates. Um, and the serverless function uh, has, has all the, the node side stuff. And the primary reason we want to use this is because I don't want to expose my secrets to, to the front end, right? If, I, if I'm a front end developer, anyone snooping my browser tools can actually see uh, the, the secrets. So I want this to only run on the server side. Does that mean I have to spin up a, a full server? No, because I can just proxy it through uh, a serverless function. Uh, the only problem is then I have to deploy this to production every single time and, and, and get that running. So essentially, I need, what I need to do is, is local emulation. Um, so I'm going to run Netlify Dev, uh, and I'm going to cheat a little bit by running Netlify Dev Live. Uh, it, that is a CLI command. Um, and this, so what this does is it runs the the, the local source, uh, sorry, the, lo the app locally, as well as sets up a Lambda server um, that, and proxies both of them together. So you have a, a full stack replication on your local machine of your of what of what, what your app should look like. Um, so I'm going to let it build for a bit. Um, this does take a while, which it, which which I'm a little nervous about. <laughs> and we're about to use public internet, which uh, again is another source of risk. But uh, that's what makes life interesting. <laughs> okay. So um, and, and while I, while I, while I sort of kill time, this basically hits a Airtable backend, right? This is how the React knowledgeable meetup site uh, knows all your RSVPs. Um, it sticks everything into a, into a, into an API. Okay, so this is building at the back, um, and this is uh, and so so this is built live. La la la. Please be please work, please work. Yeah. Okay. So so this is a fork uh, of of I just added the word fork in, fork inside it, um, and and the, so the whole idea is that um, it's it's able to pull, for example, from here, uh, my Airtable back in. Let me just click there. Am I able to click there? <laughs> please work. Mm. Uh, okay, hang on. Let me. I, I should probably show you the air table. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure what I, I'm not, not going to try and debug uh, right right away, but I'm supposed to be able to click click here and, and kind of go through go through with that. Um, actually, let me. Uh, yeah. Let, okay. I'm just I'm just oh, host eight 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 eight. Localhost 8888. Ah, sorry, my machine is kind of eating eating up itself. Um, okay, so so it's actually pulling uh, from this from this Airtable backend via this serverless function. So it's uh, so 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 for example, let me let me just uh, try and show you um, in the console if I can if I can do it well enough on speed. So if I um, if I do like, yeah, I, I'm just going to do Stripe again. Um, it's actually going to going to simulate that the API response in the backend um, and actually add it um, in into my into my database. Um, and all of this is running local locally. On, I'm on localhost 888 right 888 right now, um, and it's and it's showing up. So so I have a local emulation of that of both the front end and the back end, which is very important um, for you know for, for high fidelity uh, testing. Um, and and the last thing the last thing I want to show you this is the the most this is the, this is the actual data uh, feature. So for example, if I wanted to work on this live, so currently this project is working in development mode live on my laptop. Um, and I wanted to show you how it looks in on your device on, on uh, to my product manager to my designer. Um, I can actually share the URL and they can see it on their on their machine as well. So I'm gonna stick it into a QR code uh, and let uh, you guys if you if you want to take a take a take a quick photo of that. Um, and that should open up in your browser and, and you can see um, again, this code is running live on my machine. I haven't deployed it yet, but um, what, I, what, I, what I really want is to take advantage of React's hot reloading features, right? Um, and and that's, that's, the, that's the really fast uh, pace, of, pace of development. So over here, I'm on the same page that you are. I'm, I'm on the same uh, page. Is, is everyone loading this correctly? Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit this style again. Uh, again, I, I'm not making a PR. This is running locally. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just adding that in this style that I, that I want to demo demo for. Um, and the whole point is to try and push it out to everybody. On your phone, you should be seeing uh, that live updating feature. Um, so the, the, the whole process is get this in, get, get into your development process, get it out to your, your, your stakeholders as fast as possible. When you're happy with it, commit it, get it deployed, and get it out there. So 
reducing as much uh, incidental complexity as possible. That's the whole idea. Um, all right, last, last bit. So, so uh, as you can see how Netlify evolved from an edge, edge service to a build service to a dev service, uh, your code is actually, we're actually trying to trace your code backwards from, uh, from developing your code to building and then deploying. Uh, and, so, and so hopefully that, that makes a, a lot of sense. Uh, final pitch as to like, what kind of people use Netlify. Netlify. Uh, the, the, obviously, ReactJS.org uses Netlify, uh, Redux, uh, as well as the framework that we won't mention. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, content sites like Smashing Magazine, uh, uh, Citrix, uh, which I, 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 I personally don't use, but you know, they're, they're a really, really big enterprise. Um, and then Sequoia Capital, which uh, actually is one of the few VCs that don't invest in, in Netlify. So. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> uh, so uh, marketing sites as well is really is really uh, you know it's a really good model for for uh, serving uh, marketing sites uh, uh, and you know especially for spiky workloads like, for example like election day uh, you might have very spiky workloads you should have static assets instead of overloading your servers and scaling up and spinning down oh, who cares about that kind of thing just just put it on CDN uh, e-commerce as well is, is proving out to be a, a interesting use case I, I think people here are familiar with Popeyes and they they handled a lot of load uh, recently with Netflix. Which is which is really really great. Uh, Loblaw is, is, uh, is the largest uh, e retail commerce thing in uh, company in, in, in Canada, and, and they had a, a really good talk at the recent Jamstack Conf as well, which I highly recommend people people watch. Uh, as well as Peloton, the, the the bike company, which are uh, strong fans of Netlify as well. Um, Apps Wise is a little bit uh, more interesting, right? Because like you have to you have to like mix the static nature with the dynamic nature. Um, so I, I like to talk about PayPal, even though they're not a Netlify customer, they actually investigated Jamstack a lot. Um, and because the PayPal, because of their financial uh, needs, they don't they, they, they ended up not using Netlify because we didn't have SOC2 certification at the time. But uh, they went and built their own Netlify infrastructure and PayPal.me is now on, on Jamstack. Uh, Gatsby store, if you, if you contribute to Gatsby or buy any stuff from Gatsby, that's a working open source e-commerce app. And you can actually see how to, how to implement uh, uh, you know, dynamic apps on Netlify. And of course, uh, uh, Netlify is implemented on Netlify itself. So everything authenticated, uh, you know, deploy, transactional that you can do uh, with, with, a, with a regular site, you can do Jamstack and you can do on Netlify. Um, so, if you want to learn more, uh, there's a there's a there's a free ebook that that's, that's just been published, Modern Web Development on the Jamstack, and that's the QR code for that. Um, and if you uh, want a, a, a step by step tutorial, uh, I actually recorded a three and a half hour uh, a YouTube video, um, just walking you through how to use every single feature in Netlify. Yeah, <laughs> that took a month. Um, but anyway, that's it. Thank you so much.